Did you get that open? It's open. I haven't popped it. We're recording. We're We're live. live. Welcome back, everybody. We're at a new location. This took some doing. We're barely pushing our time limit. Do it. We got to. Scott's bringing up the comments right now. Well, not yet. I'm All right, yeah. we'll do our introductions. We had 15 minutes in between our shows. That's that was right. pushing it on this one. We're there was still a moving. bathroom break in there. As soon as it goes live, I'm not say anything. That's right. Intro, intro. Uh, I'm Scott. I'm Bart. Uh, we're going to take a look at a 19, actual from 1953 Old Forester Ooh, and a bad bottle of wow that was sent to us by. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, Brian from PravadaCigarClub.com and Pravada Cigars. Sweet. What are we going to do, Scott? We're going to test it. Oh, look at that. The world's turning. So I, I want to bring you in with how I found this bottle of 1953 Old Forester bottled in bond. Um, I've always been a, a spirit guy, but I, I never really got into bourbon the way I did until my wife and I went to uh, – bourbon country last year and uh we were uh we biked around to some of the distilleries and uh long story short when i got back home i was at a christmas party later in the year and i was talking about bourbon as i'm known to do and um my father said oh you know by the way your grandfather i have a bunch of his bottles from his collection apparently he didn't drink i don't understand that but he he did uh show off a, a nice bar of bottles really? so uh we went down in the basement and the, the funny thing is is all the stuff that my father and my uncle think are worth money are not and all this stuff it's like old decanters of vermouth that have to be bad like there's no way that lasted six <laughs> years right um and then like there's all these bottles of bourbon that are sealed and he's like yeah just take them Ooh. i'm like uh, Okay, so um, this was one of the bottles, and this was the bottle I decided to open. I decided to open it because I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to open the old Fitzgerald, which I, I think your your viewers would like the to see that it has a key on it, like that other um, that other brand. I forget the name uh, that they go by. Blade and Bow. Yes, Blade and Bow, which is actually good bourbon, by the way. It's a little pricey, but I heard that if you bring like a certain amount of keys to uh you know to wherever they are um that you can get something free out of it i don't know if that's true or not but anyway so so this is it and the reason why i was interested in in really just holding on to this is because this was distilled at stitzer weller while pappy was the head honcho there wow okay so i thought that was pretty cool too um so i said you know let's hold on to that who knows what that could be worth uh let's go for this old forester um it's an interesting bottle the cork did break okay so this is not this has no cork on it i did find some of my go-to cheap stuff is my bottle of 114 fits mm. right in there so it's kind of a wide mouth the bottle i mean this is a lot more beautiful and more detailed than what we're used to these days i mean yeah, no kidding it, no look at that it's pretty amazing i did have to filter cork out of it okay all right, but it was sitting in a dark uh, Tupperware type bin for the last. I would imagine. I mean, he died in the '80s, so I, I'm imagining it was a, it was a way even before that. So you know, it, it's got a good 30 years sitting in, in my father's basement in uh, in Allentown, Pennsylvania. So yeah, that bottle is gorgeous. I almost for when you first showed it, I thought well, maybe that was a decanter until you turned it on its side there, and I could see it. It's amazing the detail that went into things back then. I mean, just the the I don't know if you can see this, but this alone, the 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 uh, the lid or the top of it. I mean, this is would be expensive to make these days. I do notice that there's all types of stuff engraved in the actual bottle, not on the sticker that goes on the outside. Which actually, I'm not sure. I was looking at. Yeah, I believe that is a sticker, but it could just be laser printed or whatever they. In fact. I don't think it is a sticker, the gold writing. Um, mm. But what um, what I thought was interesting was on the actual bottle, in the front and the back, in the glass, it says, and it's like a raised font or whatever in the glass, it says federal law pro forbid sale or reuse of this bottle. So I think guys were um, – we're potentially taking the bottles and re recapping them. 
Huh. You know, there were a lot of people that did that kind of stuff back in the day. Sure. Uh, now, our second or our first guest from our second show, Dave Dvorak, is still here. He's sitting in the background. I just poured him a little sample of this as well. Nice. And if, if you if you weren't paying attention, this is actually from 1953. Wow. Old Forester. Yeah. And I took the coin off and a blast of cherries. Yeah, beautiful. I didn't know what to expect with a whiskey from 1953, but the nose is wonderful. It is. So, I mean, just to intervene on that, I, I was also shocked that it tastes – just like bourbon, it's a slightly different. I mean, you know, a lot of people say, uh, you know, it doesn't age once it's out of the wood. But um, I'm sure that, you know, 60 years does something to any liquid. And I, I do think it's it's held up quite well. I agree. What are you getting on the nose of this? Cher the cherries hit me up front and vanilla, caramel. I did taste it. Bart already I couldn't hold <laughs> off. I sipped it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I, I do, and I've tasted it before, so I know this ahead of time. I do get a lot more wood, or more oak, more oakiness. I get a lot more oakiness. Uh, oakiness. Oakiness. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Dave's okay. saying butterscotch. Butterscotch through the mouth. <laughs> Sounds dirty, Dave. <laughs> better than through the nose um, That's right. uh, I do get butterscotch I get butterscotch and I get a lot of that oakiness we're going to get that this, was, this is a bottled in bond so it's 50% correct it smells delicious and I also did a little I'll try to include it uh, in the comments I did a another uh, YouTube uh, on, I'll put it in the comments when this thing publishes, a video of the actual bottle and you get to see it and I talk a little bit more about it. Now let, let's back up just a little bit and how we came into contact with you. We had had our review of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof up for some time. We'd done some live streams. We were always pulling it out. We were, all, we're always talking about it. We're loving it. You had picked up a bottle and you commented, you said, <laughs> well, hold on I didn't just get to go to the store and pick up a bottle. This was something that took me a long time to find. Uh, I was probably watching you guys for six months by the time I found it. And your uh, that one of those videos are where you talked about that being a bottle of wow was something that I spotted right up front when I started watching you guys. So I had been looking for this. Um, I finally found it. Um, I We moved to Pennsylvania a year ago. We're already moving, long story. but. Uh, we moved back to Pennsylvania a year ago, and Pennsylvania has crazy state liquor laws. You know, they're all state run. So you don't get guys like Dave who are connoisseurs, you know, that really have a passion for it, getting the supply, right? Um, but once a year for different brands, they'll get like they had, they get happy once a year, but they don't sell it. They all, they, um, no, they lottery it off. That's what it is, mm -hmm. which is cool because you can get it for a good price. My friend actually uh, won a bottle of, which we'll talk about that in a sec. But at any rate, I finally found it. I was so excited. I got it home. I, I, I tried it. And um, I did not love it at first. But then as I would try it more often, I started to absolutely hate it to the point where I was willing to give you guys my bottle. I saved a little bit just so we could do this online. <laughs> Well, and I know you guys love it so much. You guys are kind of the professionals here, so no, I'm like, no, no. you know, I'm a little, little. Um, I, I do. Uh, your tasting note was a bottle of turpentine, I believe. I said that it's it, it it it's it's vanilla up front, and then what I imagine turpentine to taste like. That is right. <laughs> <laughs> good. Now hold on, we got an adjustment going on here. You're good. We're still coming in. Good comments. Yes. All right. All right, a lot of energy. Now, so but anyway, so you come and we. So I, I had seen your comment that you thought you had a bad bottle, you didn't like it. You even had, <laughs> you had a buddy that you had shared it with, and he didn't like it either. Okay, so we, we were I, doing we were doing a live stream, and I said, hey, we got this recent comment from right. Brian. He right. doesn't like it, and we were like, send it, to send us. it. We'll test right. it. <laughs> so then you contact. You said, I'm sending it to you. You guys can test it and see if it's bad. <laughs> That's right. We're like, yes. Which is right here. So Ooh. we are gonna we're gonna move on to this one. Now this one took a hit. Ooh. Originally you had you sent this. Well, yeah. Originally you had sent a sample of this 1953 old oh. Forester and this bottle of Wow. 
and the box literally looked like it had been run over yeah. by the mail truck. Yeah, the postman was angry because he knew a bottle of wild was in there, and he kicked the, it. The 1953 <laughs> took the brunt of the uh, damage. It was smashed, and even this bottle of wild got some heavy damage up right. around the neck of it. Angry. But, so you even you sent us back another sample yet of this 1953 old Forester. Thank you. So that's why we're this. That's how we got to this point. Right. I know how passionate you guys are, and I wanted to share this with someone that knows. You know, I get guys that come over to the house, they drink bourbon, but you're like, you're, it's just not, you know. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank they, don't know what, they don't know what, they, you know, half of these guys don't know what they're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame to waste anything good on some, you know. Real quick, before we move on, uh, Amy pointed out she got the movie quote on the board, first one Ooh, that I saw. Way to go, Amy. Wow. Oh, you All did? Right. You Where's your brain? Why'd you hit me? She got it. Amy got it. Ferris Bueller. Boom. Yep. It's where right, Ferris go, go ahead. You already got it on your palate. I haven't tasted yet. Well, I, I'm going to say the 1953 just tastes like great bourbon. Mm -hmm. bourbon your own name. Mm -hmm. Are we going into the um, the wow? No, not, not yet. yet. We're still not yet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say that overall, <laughs> if I'm simplifying it, it just tastes like great bourbon. It's a little light, but it, there is a w extra wood in there. Right, but and it's really yeah. sweet though too. Not like right. corn sweet, but almost cotton candy sweet. Right, candy like. It's yeah, good. yeah, it's, yeah. It's got that velvety mouth feel on it. So I'm gonna imagine that that's what bourbon tasted like back then. Mm -hmm. Out of this distillery, Old Forester, that's what it tasted like. I, I'm, I'm guessing, you know. I think that these things with the the wood and the weather that the oak grows in. You know the tastes of the bourbons do change over time, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Dave also asked if you tried some James E. Pepper, the seventeen seventy six, right? Does he have any in his collection? Do you, do you have any in your collection? He's asking. Do you I think do it's not, similar to that? Because it used to be made. From this. Okay. You okay. See, that that recipe is kind of from the sixties, so it might even be similar. I haven't had the seventeen seventy six bourbon, just the rye. Interesting. I I'll have to try it. It's a great bottle. I just never picked it up. Uh, by the way, I'm using uh, from oh. Cask One, coin number 60, Ooh. which was my personal coin I carried for a long Ooh. time. It does have a small chip in it from where it was dropped Makes on. It better. Now, are we? is this the one we're giving away? I don't know. To the There's commenters? Some, you're, you're, they're going to clamor for it now. Yes. That's a Cask One because I've got 330 Cask Two. Cask Two. So, yes, that'll be given away. Just, well, do you have yours? No. Oh, it's at your house. Right. Yeah. I do have Jesse Voison's. Number 57? The 57 Chevy. I actually am carrying Jesse Voison sent us an Air Force coin from South Carolina, F-16, metal coin. Thank you, Jesse. Nice. Yeah, that was cool. A lot. Of, there's a lot of cinnamon in the old Forester. It's overall really pleasant. It mm -hmm. is. It really is. I expected it to be more medicinal after that much time, you know? Or no alcohol as it evaporates. Right. Yeah. yeah Dave's even, also saying he thought he was thinking maybe it would have evaporated and it would have had less of that alcohol yeah. kind of influence. Yeah. Totally. Good one, Dave. Yeah. Because you're right. I get that strong oakiness, um, a good cinnamon flavor. It's very velvety and it's warm and it's and it's yeah. even got a refreshing kind of refreshing warmth to it. So it's a good holiday uh, holiday bourbon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dave should sit on Bart's shoulders for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, he wanted to get on the lap, and I just had to call him. I was like, no. <laughs> I, well, you know, tasting something so old, what if I got excited? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. All right, that went bad. That went bad. What do we got coming in comment-wise? Uh, <laughs> nothing good. <laughs> Bert. Bird Dog 2017, he says he enjoyed Old Forester in the 70s, but it lost some luster in the 80s. Really? Hmm. And we haven't had, we've had Old Forester 1920 Prohibition. Right. But that's the only Old Forester we've had. That's supposed to be the right recipe, now. right? Their, their recipe from it's, Prohibition or something? Uh, yes. Marketing. That's what I'm going to say. No, this is delicious. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. That is neat to try. A lot of cherries, a lot of cinnamon. Yeah, oh, oakiness. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the um, the old fits. I, I think I'll just hold on to it until I figure out 
that I definitely want to drink it. I heard it's worth about fifteen hundred dollars. Woo! Wow. You know. Now what is it? Show it again. And that one, this one is distilled. So this is the the Pappy was the head of the distillery at Stitzer Weller, uh, where it was uh, bo- uh, it was born on I think forty eight and bottled in fifty three also, and it's also bottled in bond. It's a fifty proof, and it's still uh, sealed, right? Still sealed. Got the key. The cork on this one looks pretty good. I did make a slight. I don't know if it's an error or not. I did put it on its side so that the cork would get some some uh, juice back so it doesn't deteriorate because I didn't like the fact that I had to strain it. I, you know, I don't think that that affected the flavor at all, but you know, if being a purist, I, I would not like to touch it with anything. Right. Sure. No, Dave says that's good. Cause you want to keep that cork uh, moist, right? Otherwise yeah. it will degrade. On it did. It did. Uh, I guess because the cork had probably shrunk it. Um, it seeped a little bit out. I had a little um, glob on the shelf where I had it. And mm. it's funny because, you know, when we went to some of the distilleries and you would see some of the barrels leak a little bit, it kind of, it had that kind of a, an aroma to it, like an old funky kind of. Yeah. Well, so, it looks like it's lost a little bit. I mean, you can yes. tell it's not up to the neck. That's correct. That's so correct. you are, uh, would you say you're entertaining offers for that? Does, if they wanted to contact you via email, mm, you're going to get them in trouble. You know, I, I'm sure. I mean, if it's really worth, something to someone you know that's uh, you know amazing i you know with an auction house i'm sure there'll be a proper auction yeah, house yeah, used, oh, yeah correct. all the yeah. illegal yeah. Both brothers want to buy it for you know for ten thousand dollars sure <laughs> you there can, you go a proper auction house keeps i'll, give him, I'll give him a massage while he drinks it <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um but yeah I, I don't know i mean if someone's really passionate about it and really wants it they can hit me up i, I just my grandfather's, but you know, he's got more. He's also got a bottle of cognac I'm interested in too. I got to go back and steal that one though. Cause they think that- <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's pour the uh, bad bottle of wow. Yes, yeah, so I got to see, I've got to try this bad bottle of wow. Now, I'll also point out, though, I never added water to that 1950 no, old forester. Nor I. No. Dave either. It's gone. Yeah. Dave either. Dave enjoyed that one. That's a three way. Thank you. You want to crack? Right. No. Nope. It's a menage thanks is what's going on. <laughs> See, I had to take it weird again. Watch out. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's right. We're keeping it alive, baby. We're keeping it alive. I don't want to spill that. Whoa. Yeah, there you okay. go. So this one, if you go too too forward on the nose, you're going to burn. You are going to burn. Yeah, you want to approach it with caution. It's like a redhead. you got to come in careful. <laughs> My first wife was a redhead. That didn't end well. We've heard that story. All right, Dave's out here. See you, Dave. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now, what I want to know before you guys go into this is, what do you love about this? What do we love about the wow? All right. Now, Scott's checking on Dave on something. I'm going to keep going. For me, um, it I get a supernova burst of flavor immediately when it hits the palate. And it's not just the alcohol spark that's coming in. It's like a flavor explosion. And the very first time I tried it and Scott tried it, literally it was like, I mean, he was, he had had it before he let me try it. And he said, Hey, I want to see what you think of this. And as I took it, it was an immediate experience. And I literally, the whole reason we call it a bottle of wow is when I swallowed, I was like, wow. And it wasn't just the alcohol spark. I'm gonna to have to try it again to to kind of pin down. I can't remember all the specifics. Yeah, no, no, you're you're. I just I just sipped it, and and, and you're right. There is a, and I call it like an when they get this high in proof, uh, like an effervescent. It almost like opens in your mouth. That yes. it doesn't sound too bad. No, no, that's perfect. I mean, you're right. exactly right. Um, and you're okay. right on the nose. You want he asked what it right. is that we get. I walked Dave out real quick now, and as as I was walking out, I heard you ask why we really like this. Right. And I was even telling Dave, to me, this is still one of the best bourbons you can find. It takes wow. some looking, but it is out. <laughs> He's there. like, wow. See, you said wow. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's a bottle of wow. You you oh, like yeah, I really like this. Okay. I do. Oh, I do. I. Do. I I, I plan to come into this totally defending my position, but as you're talking about it so passionately, like you do on the uh, the video blogs, 
Uh, I'm I'm giving it another a, a, another once over here. Well, I am with you that it comes in so hot though. It does come in very very hot, and when I'm when I'm oh, here's here's how I usually enjoy this when I'm not even tasting it, it or tasting it, where I'm not testing it for the show. Yeah. I always take my first sip neat, but that's not how I sit back and enjoy it. After I get that first sip neat. I will usually take one ice cube and put it in here. Uh -huh. Yeah, I really then enjoy like sipping it as that cube slowly melts down. And one cube does obviously with this high spark of alcohol content doesn't dilute it down to a bad point. So I love kind of tasting those transitions as it goes down. Uh, so for me, it's kind of an ongoing taste experience while I'm sipping it. Got it. A uh, question just come in. This one is what was bottled at sixty nine point seven percent. Does now I'll tell you the one this is. The ah, get it, get it, get it. God dang, dude. Hey, I didn't know that was there. It didn't break. Nothing broke. Woo. Come on, the calamity's gonna happen while we're alive. Yeah, it's only hour three. Yes, we're not even in yet. Uh, Look, six, he got it mad at me. He it does slap me. <laughs> that old bottling doesn't designate the batch most people will tell by the abv all right and that's what i was reaching there were, for I there was were looking slight for a variances. batch I now almost... the new bottlings do designate the batch number right one. this says your uh, bottle is 139.4 proof at 69.7 abv and this was the batch you and the other dudes from pennsylvania said oh that's the one that's what you want yeah, and that's the same my bottle here that's open back here in the back 69.7 percent and so it's the same batch i'm not touching anything else that's staged for display <laughs> so uh, so so here, here's the deal that the, on the nose it's like wasabi like you you don't know you're gonna get too much until you take too much and then it's like oh it hurts very uh, very good description you are 100 percent correct i love that okay. what'd you do with where'd my coin go to i get a burned caramel Sugar that's been cooked long, oh. almost. It's it's gone. It's kind of burning now. Now this one, I'll tell you, the nose does seem a little lighter than what I'm used to with the. See, I get ECB. I get the heavy cinnamon of like a uh, a, a cinnamon Jolly Rancher. Jolly Rancher. Oh yeah, there you go. I'm I'm into that. Okay, I'm glad that went off. I was thinking Jolly Rancher sounded weird as I said it. That's I've had one of those before. I don't think they make them anyway. Good cinnamon Jolly Rancher. The kids can't handle them these days. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They're all so gentle. They need like food. <laughs> they were, I mean, like kids, when I was a kid, the candy we had burned your mouth. It burned you. <laughs> yeah. The candy was dangerous. And then if you, you could joke on it, even. I'm going in for the first sip. All right. He's sipping in. But yeah, definitely. I get the nose. I get a sweetness. And, a, and you're right. That burnt sugar. And uh, almost like a um, the caro syrup. I get like a caro syrup sweetness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is is that like an anise kind of thing? I don't know about the anise. I say a, I say anus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I like anus. Oh, good. Um, that's simply delicious. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm rethinking it. Uh, do me a favor, Scott. Please send the bottle back. <laughs> <laughs> All gone. <laughs> A lot of cinnamon and oak. It's so yeah. full. Tons of cinnamon, tons of wood, burnt wood or burnt sugar. Yes. So it, it's like a burnt driftwood is what I get. It's deeper and darker than most. Yes. It's got yeah. a lot of character to it. I, I will say that. Now, are you so, able to, while you're there, do you have any water to step it down? I did bring up, a, I knew you guys were going to talk about that, so I brought uh, some water. Some beautiful. So, so one so, of my favorite things. Sorry, go ahead, Scott. Well, no, are on. you changing your tune a little bit on it? I am changing my tune. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. So I one am. of my one of my favorite things with this is that step down procedure, and but but you're right. Um, like my wife would hate this when she first. I mean, she hasn't even tried it. I've introduced her to a few things. The uh, the. Um, Jack oh, Daniels. Jack barrel. Daniels. Uh, double barrel. Yeah, I call it the double barrel, the barrel proof. Um, and I let let her try that neat, and then I step that down for her because it has a little bit of a banana cream flavor. She wanted to try yeah. it. But if she tried this, it would be way, way too strong just knowing her power. Yeah, my, my wife tried it. She, she really got into the bourbons after the trip, and uh, 
she tried it. She just, you know, made the sour face and was like, forget it. I can't drink this. Yeah, and it is very she looked, uh, she looked at the proof. She was just like, yeah, I'm already married to you. Perfect. What are you trying to do here? <laughs> uh, Box of Quality points out that the Jack Daniels uh, barrel proof doesn't have the aging of the Elijah Craig, mm. uh, but it's still, but it's mellow. And it is. It is. And it's a seven to eight year old. Now, the Elijah Craig barrel proof still comes with the 12 year age statement, even the new bottlings. I did half of half of the squeezer, the dropper. Perfect. Mm. And, um, it is perfect. And you know what? I get a lot more cinnamon. I get a richer, fuller body. It's not just tweaking my sinuses. It's it's op it's it's um it's it's staying more in the middle i guess i don't know how else to describe it it's very good it, it is very good yes i get a very pleasant finish with this with the bottle of wow too it's like a uh like a lingering caramel like i've like i've had a couple brock's candies uh, as i say hard candy <laughs> and then and then it's it's gone but I get that coating in my mouth of that that caramel caramel aftertaste with this as well. I should have stepped this down. I you did never... it with ice once or twice, and it, and it was it was better with ice. But there was something in it that I didn't like. Now I do want to. I, I we have some time, right? Yes, absolutely. So I want to take some sidelines and just things that I think your listeners might find interesting. A friend of mine came to visit. I had a bottle of one fourteen old Granddad. Okay. When I was doing the uh, bourbon trail, everyone in Kentucky and Nashville were trying to get their hands on 114 Old Granddad. No one could find it anywhere. All the bartenders, and we went to some really cool places, really, you know, I don't want to say exclusive, but the speakeasy kind of places, the hip, you know, and all the bartenders were trying, they were talking about it, and then I found it when I came home. I, I, there was an abundance uh, of these things where I live. And so, um, it was one of my favorites at first, and I wouldn't step it down too much, if at all, maybe a small cube. Um, but after I started buying some of the other stuff and watching you guys and tasting things and really, you know, kind of developing my palate, as they say, um, I went back to the old granddad recently, cracked a bottle. My friend was coming into town. He doesn't, you know, he's not that big of a connoisseur. He drinks light beer and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, we're going to do this bottle together, right? And I opened it up. We both agreed that it was like bitter caramel at the first pours, okay? Well, we went, we had some beers. We were smoking cigars. We brought the bottle back out. It had about only four hours of sitting, and it was like a little bit less than that. That had been taken a little bit more than that had been taken out so it was like down to here and let me tell you it was a total different bourbon it was totally different it turned into a beautiful thing with orange peel and uh you know uh, uh the 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 caramel flavors and i mean it was so noticeably different that even he who's like he looks at me he's like i don't know i don't pull any of that stuff you're crazy it's you know it's whiskey Right. He was like, oh, this is – no, this has to be a different bottle. It's totally – so a bottle can change even just with that – just changing how much air is in it, which is amazing. Right. I agree. And Scott and I found out one night we were having, uh, what, the old Guinness. I oh. used to like to drink a real heavy dark Guinness now and then. And, uh -huh. and we were sipping on a Guinness and we were trying some bourbon. And just the combination of those two – even opened up some things that were different for me with the bourbon we had. So, right I mean, there's a good possibility what you had eaten or even drinking, drinking, yeah. what the heck, what you had drinking, what drunken, kind of, drinking, what you had drinking. I don't know what the word is there. Drinking, <laughs> drinking, drunken. Hey, what you drinking? <laughs> yeah, what you drinking when you're drinking over there? What did I turn into a Cajun all of a sudden? I don't know what happened. So whatever you had had on your palate and the fact that it opened up, yeah, because Scott and I have and I've noticed that some things open up and, and will change in a, in a big way. Matter of fact, that uh, that Nadura, the peated Nadura, the Glenlivet, um, 
he had had his bottle sitting around for what, six, eight months when I tried it the first time? Probably, yeah, six, probably. And I went and bought two of them because I loved it so much down in Texas. And when I opened it up and tried it right away, the same flavors weren't there. So I quickly recorked it and just put it on the shelf yeah. and I'm letting it sit for a while. So you're 100% correct. And then the other thing I want to uh, not challenge you guys on, but uh, theoretically, okay, uh, philosophically with bourbon, okay, I want to talk about this guy right here. Buff- Buffalo Trace, yeah. you bet. So to me, this is the basic. It's $24. Right. That is Delicious. basic bourbon. And so, like, I've had this conversation with a, with a, another bourbon connoisseur. And, you know, bourbon was never supposed to be this highbrow thing where we spent $60, it's the cheap stuff, it's so that they could you know, uh, uh, stop the corn from getting moldy and do something with it so that it would sell or it was easier to transport, et cetera, okay? So to me, this is almost as good as anything. Does anyone want to argue that? No, I will agree with you 100%. We find bottles no. all, oh, well, go ahead. No, Watch no out. go ahead. What say I'll you? I'll let you finish. <laughs> I mean, he, Bruno's always teasing me saying I'm a cheap date because I will find a good bottled and bond or even my Rittenhouse rye. Yeah. And, and oh, Rittenhouse rye is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is fantastic. Scott, I went to a, 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 a very, I don't want to use the term again, but highbrow, you know, kind of place, a new the swanky spot that opened in there. You know, they want to be known for their bourbon uh, uh, array. And so – I looked at the menu, and I have a nice collection at home, right? I pay fifty dollars a bottle, something like that. I mean, their their pours were eighteen dollars. I'm not a cheap guy, but for me, I already own this stuff. I'm not going to pay you eighteen dollars for a a, a Jack a single barrel. Sorry. Right. So right. I said, I looked at their cheap stuff, and I said, this is a good opportunity for me to try something different that I probably wouldn't buy in a store because I think it's too cheap. Right. So and and there and I have been guilty of that, too. And so I tried the Rittenhouse rye, which is damn there in a plastic bottle. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so and I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> like, I mean, I was like, I want to get a bottle of this and I cannot find it here. Oh, yeah. No, um, my thoughts on that are I, I agree. The Buffalo Trace, twenty five dollars a bottle here is one of the best buys out there. And if you want to know what a bourbon is and what it's supposed to taste like, that's, that's the Buffalo Trace. Um, and I'll tell you another one though, right in there with it, and a lot of people agree, is the Henry McKenna bottled in bond, yeah. 10 year old. Yeah, and it's good. like $28 around here. It, delicious, goodbye. If you haven't bought it, give that one a go as well. I don't know that I've even seen that. Hmm. Yeah, look for Henry McKenna, 10 years bottled in bond. It's kind of an bond. understated uh, label. I always thought the label was a little bit plain. I guess I'll, I'll Google it later. That's fine. Yeah, look for it too. Yeah, well, well. Okay. And, and what about Albert T. Lee? Who has experience with that? We've got it, yeah, and it's coming up later. We're going to yeah. have it with Mark Gillespie. Is it is it fantastic? Is it good? Is it okay? Like, where does it kind of fit in? It's good. I, I remember it above average. I yeah, mean, that I was one. So. Isn't that where we're wearing our wife beaters? Sorry, our, our T-shirts without sleeves. <laughs> that is the Elmer T. I believe yeah. it is. We're so uh, our, uh, Italian dinner yeah. jacket. Yeah, it was our Guido, Guido <laughs> shirts, I believe somebody said. What did you, we, cut off, we cut you off. What did you say? No, no. Um, uh, I, I forgot where I was going with this. But, uh, I, oh, I do want to share one other experience that I had. So I finally found a guy in my town. I met him at a brewery in Florida. And he was like, oh, I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. I was like, no one else is from Allentown. But we were both from Allentown, and we, we exchanged info, and I moved back here, blah, 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 blah. And I, um, I called the guy up, and, uh, and we got pretty rowdy at this, at this thing, and you know there was things that happened and were said. And <laughs> I felt like I was kind of having to chase the guy down, but I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't really know anyone here anymore. So I was like, dude, I got no one else. You're coming over to my house. I got tons of bourbon. And he's a big bourbon guy. I remember him yeah. telling me that. So he brought six bottles that he wanted me to try, and I had probably nine bottles that I wanted him to try. That sounds like a good night. Uh, yeah, it got crazy. But I, here's, here's, here's what I want to say. I was sick for like three days, but oh, here's, here's what I want to say. Kind of like how you guys are going to be for the next three days. No, oh, no, 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 no. We've got a doctor. Uh, we got a doctor We've monitoring got a doctor us. Monitor. Hour three, unless you're getting the IV delivered to your house, <laughs> you're going to feel sick tomorrow. So um, 
we we he brought a bottle of 12 year pappy okay i brought the old forester these were the two premium you know selections that we brought to the table the rest was um uh, anywhere from uh 70 on down we had some great stuff i don't recollect everything we had we took pictures uh, your stuff was was in the mix, and we both were like, <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm, I'm opening. This is actually very good. I'm also buzzed off this one drink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um, but then we also uh, we saved Pappy for last, and I did it on purpose because I wanted to say that this is all BS. It's all hype. It's all marketing. Forget it. It's not better than everything. And I saved like two of my favorites for the end, and he saved the Pappy and one of his favorites for the end. And the Pappy was by far, after 12 or 14 different selections, better than everything else. Really? really? All right. There you go. Very good. It was. We were both like, oh, yeah. Like after tasting all these different bourbons, that's what a bourbon should taste like. Now, I've had – there was a place in um, – I think Louisville is so slept on. People go to all the distilleries and stuff, but there's so many cool. It's like a real hipster town. Um, and we went and we found some really cool places. And there was one place that I think should be a hot franchise across the country, and it's called the Silver Dollar. Hmm. It's an old firehouse, and it looks like almost like going to summer camp or something, right? And the food is all like meatloaf and stuff like that, but then you order it, and it's like the best food you've ever had. And they have a selection of bourbon. I, I'm, I'm t like they'll have they, they'll they'll have Pappy, but they'll have ninety eight, two thousand one, two thousand four, two thousand six. They'll have they had Weller all the way every year back to like in the nineties. Wow! And I tried the newest Weller and the oldest Weller they had. It was reasonably priced stuff, and I think Weller is. It's the real deal, but it's still it's expensive, man. It, 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 but to me, it's the epitome of what a bourbon should be. I mean, if you're not, if you're, if you're gonna go away from this, you know. Oh well, well, well Buffalo Trace is a corn, uh, you know, or fifty-one percent corn. It's got some rye in it. Where your van, the Van Winkle and the Weller is a weeded. They've replaced the rye with the weeded. Ah. So, you know, some people don't care for the weededs as much as they do, you know, in the normal bourbon with the rye in it. I didn't know that. And yeah. by the way, this is actually excellent. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we won him over. We won him over. over. <laughs> Not one of these people that, that, you know, once I commit, that's it. I, I'm, I gave it a shot, and this is excellent. I don't know if it's because I had so much air sitting here, but whatever. It's very good. You open it up, yeah. Hey, and that's good. Cool. And I've said it a couple of times. That's why. And I know you'd even tried it a couple of times. Never judge a dram by the first drink. Sure. If you don't like it, always always save it. Go back to it later and yeah. see. It could be something that's on your palate. It could be something you ate that day. Maybe you're just the mood that you're in. Sure. Voila. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sausage. Uh, Sausage. What, what you ate is a big is a big deal. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I said, I might, Bruno might be in a saucy mood. Yeah. That's hey, we got to we got to do a giveaway do here. A giveaway. We got a couple giveaways we got to do now. I got this is going to go out to the people that are watching. That's this crazy. Is, this is a cask one coin number sixty. It's got a small chip in it because I carried this so with me for a long time. That's our first run. That was in his pocket. This is this is a trivia question for those that are watching. Are we signing that? We are. Way? We are going to. We will initial this one. We'll initial it. All right. And let's go out. What is the ABV of the bottle of Wow that we're tasting? Ooh, so they had to be paying attention to the show. Yes. What if they can see it? They, they can't won't be able to see it. Wow. Who's our fellow that's won three times in a row? I, I almost just yelled it out. Just I to, know. Ah. Me too. <laughs> that's usually me. I'll be like, 59.2%. And they'll be like, and he'll look at me like, idiot. Yeah, idiot. you're sitting in front of the bottle. It's right. Like, Claire. Claire won. Claire the third gets the, oh, wow. Wow. Boy. Yeah. Well, it's your silver Sharpie. Thanks for watching, Claire. <laughs> now, this other one, I almost choked on the sausage because we're having to eat while we're on the show. My apologies. I thought those were Twizzlers. No, no, no. Twizzlers are good, but he's got these, he bought these beef steaks so we can keep oh. our stomach full. I know. I waited until after I tried it. We're also, uh, we've had four more people join Patreon, so we're at 28. So this time we're going to do 
hold on, let me get on here. We're going to do 1 through 28 for this uh, for this coin. This is a cast 2 coin. Let me get Siri up. Siri, give me a random number between 1 and 28. 26. Wow. wow. That's a new one. Uh, one of the new ones just won something. Somebody that just joined wow. today. Wow. Right on there, 26. We're wow. nice. So somebody who just joined today is is already in on a win, and we'll sign these as well. Oh, you'll sign that one? Yeah, yeah, we'll sign those as I'm well. Going That's to cool. the black side. Oh, you're doing black. Hey guys, can I share one more story before we go here? You do it, do it we while we're signing. Okay, great. Here's the deal. So we did all this. We became bourbon, you know, snobs and everything on our trip, and uh, we went all the way to California, touted bourbon the entire way, bought tons of bourbon along the way, came back. Stopped in, uh, we wanted to stop in both Nashville and Louisville uh, again on the same trip because it was just so amazing. And, and the, the house that we were, we were building uh, with my father, who's a builder, wasn't done yet. So we were still kind of out in uh, no man's land being nomads. And uh, we, we were in Nashville and we said, we should go to uh, uh, Jack Daniels Distillery, take the tour. And so I've been a bartender. I've always looked at Jack Daniels like it's crap, right? I've always been like, hey, come on, who drinks Jack? Like old drunks. Like no one <laughs> fancy drinks Jack, right? Like, and then I was like, but we should go because it's Jack Daniels. So we went down there. And then I learned that it's just bourbon that's been passed through charcoal. That's right. Lincoln County method. And it gives it this almost fake banana gluey. You know, take and and my wife won't drink anything but Jack since. That's all I want to say. Oh. It's amazing stuff. And then I saw you guys did just the black bottle. Yes. The, uh, the old number seven. Yeah. Or, yeah. And you guys gave it a huge rating after trying all these amazing bourbons and whiskeys from around the world. And it's it stands up to anything. It's as good as anything, pretty much. It's another one of these type guys. Exactly. Uh, Agree. Uh, yeah. Of course. I always have to take it to the next level, and I'm buying the single and the this and the, you know, it's from this barrel and that one. And so I finally, I, I get, I don't want to drink these bottles because they're so expensive. I'm halfway on all of them, and I'm like, all right, I got to take it easy. I find that line that they put out. You can't find it everywhere. The Distillers Select. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I think I've seen it. Just, uh, have, like, oh. I remember, we've had the rye. Oh, yeah, they're, they're doing the different editions. They're up to, like, the third or the fourth edition of the Distiller Select. Yeah. And they're only, like, $4 more than regular Jack, number seven. Yes. And they are, I hate to say it, but they're as good as the single barrel. They're real, they have that thing that the single barrel has, and they're yeah. fantastic. So if you can find that, well, that's good for me. For, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, we rated that high, and we did take a few hits. I'll even tell you, I'm at the liquor store picking it up. Um, and, and the guys there who know me are like, blah, what are you doing getting that? I thought you were yeah. tasting stuff and I'm buying like the Lafroy lore and that at the same time. And they're like, guys, he's buying old number seven. I'm like, Hey, I kind of like it. I don't care what you guys it, think. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. We've got, we've got one minute left. One minute. So Brian, go ahead. Tell, tell everybody where to find you about your YouTube channel and all that. Push yourself. You got one minute. Plug it. Uh, PravadaCigarClub.com. You can YouTube Pravada Cigar Club. Just subscribe for now. We're a private cigar club that's going public. Uh, we launched last month. We're also launching uh, in the next month or two uh, PravadaCigars.com, which is it's it's it takes the it, it it it's a small menu. It's a curated menu. So whether you're a connoisseur or you're just getting into cigars. We did all the work for you. I We sell one or two lighters. We sell one or two cutters. This is after trying 10 and 14 and 15 different kinds of, uh, you know, of accessories and cigars. Each month we sell only one cigar. It's usually an assortment of cigars. And we have the club, which is $34.95. And we send you three to four cigars. They usually add up to price-wise about $45 to $65. And they're curated by me. They come with tasting notes, pairing notes, the whole deal. Um, best bang for your buck in the industry. And I do believe we're going to make some noise. Just getting started, coming out of the uh, 
the, the private side and, you know, taking it to the public and offering it to the public because we can buy more good stuff, you know, the more people get involved. So beautiful. All right. Beautiful. We're wrapping it up. Yep. 245. We got to go. Woo. Great guest. Good job. Got, Thank you. you. A great team. I got to tell you. <laughs> Stay on the line. We'll still have you on for a minute, Brian. And right, in the meantime, scotch it, you scotch gods. So my, my, my day's shot now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, boom. Slaunch it, dummies. Dummies.